This is an epic story, like book, the musical, and I must imagine that it was a, I mean, a, a big challenge with this take that, that Tom is doing with this movie. I wanted to know what you thought about it. How did you get involved with it? Uh, well, I got involved because Cameron McIntosh called and said that, you know, it was his intention to make a movie out of this musical and had I seen it, you know. And embarrassingly, I hadn't, you know. I mean, I knew of it and I knew how popular it was and how many people loved it, but I hadn't actually seen it. So I was on my way to Europe to attend the wedding of a friend and so I dropped off in London and I saw the musical with Cameron and then we had a meeting afterwards and the next day I had a conversation with Tom Hooper. My initial instinct was to, that it wasn't really for me. That I didn't really want to do it, you know. Um, even though I was excited by the idea, greatly, you know. I just found the character in the stage musical to be too simple, you know, and I didn't believe uh, in either his actions or his conclusions. Mm -hmm. So um, I said all that to Tom Hooper and, you know, in a way where I was trying to just, you know, say thanks very much, but it's not for me. You know, and somehow in the course of that conversation, Tom managed to engage me so deeply in the thought process behind how we could solve those problems that they became my responsibility. And I walked out of the, that meeting having changed my mind completely and now it was fundamentally of massive importance that I be involved in the film. Um, you know, so that began then the, the long process of preparing for an audition, which I hadn't, you know, I hadn't auditioned since 1998, an audition for anything, you know. Jobs come up, you have a chat with the director, you know, and you do it if that's the one that you want to do. So um, it was, it was uh, really refreshing. I, I mean, I can only imagine, and this is a, a very complex, like what you were saying, it's a very complex character, because I, I think that this is a story where each character represents something that people deal with in their lives, mm -hmm. you know, in a smaller size or a bigger size, but mm -hmm. people can relate to, and this is like this right man that does the right thing, but, mm -hmm. you know, how, how did you prepare this character? Like, what, how did you see it? Well, ultimately, I needed to know his reasons, you know, um, because, as I said, in the stage musical, I, don't, I didn't believe, you know, I, the conclusion was that he gets to just seem to come out of nowhere, you know. So, I got a bit lucky when I was doing some research. I, I, I met this woman who was the, works at the Victor Hugo Museum in, in, in Paris, and she told me about a man called Vidoc, who was Victor Hugo's influence for both Valjean and Javert. So when you go back to that source and you go then and explore Victor Hugo's influence and you put aside all the theatrical versions of Javert and the film versions of Javert and discover about the man that Victor Hugo used as the template for both those characters, even the fact that both characters were influenced by one man is very interesting. You know? um, and that's, to me, that was the, the biggest hook that I had is, is actually finding out about Vidoc and what he was known for, in case you don't know. Um, Vidoc grew up in a middle class family, had a bit of an overdeveloped sense of adventure, was imprisoned for dueling, stayed in prison for quite some time, and then with the changes of government, um, then was kind of co-opted into the police force and ended up beginning or establishing the Brigade de Surette and is commonly credited with establishing the first undercover police work. So this is the man that Victor Hugo had as his influence. So um, getting the detail of that, but also finding a place where you can see him confront his own cowardice. That to me gave me reasons for his conclusion. You know, that his outward morality was actually covering um, a deep immorality, you know, which he realizes when he's standing above the bodies of all those children. And he realizes that his own actions for political expediency have brought this about that's when he begins to see himself as a man who has no moral center and that he can't, he can't take it. He has to now get away from himself. <laughs>